Bibliophiles of the internet, my name is Adriana and today I'm here to bring you my third quarter book haul. Again, for those of you who are not mathematically inclined, that accounts for all the books I acquired between July and September, and actually as far as the ratio of read to unread books, this time it's a pretty even split. The first two things I want to mention are both books I picked up when I went to visit my sister in San Diego over the summer, and if you saw my vlog about that, then you know of what I speak. First up is the first full volume of Fence by Joanna the Mad and C.S. Picat. This is an incredible queer sports comic about two boys, Nicholas and Seiji, who come from vastly different worlds but turn out to be rival fencers. Nicholas is the illegitimate son of a legendary fencer and he's fought his way from nothing to attend this private school on a fencing scholarship. And Seiji, on the other hand, is a fencing prodigy whose spot on the team is pretty much set in stone. They not only end up as roommates, but they are fighting to secure their spots on the team and of course they instantly clash. It is hilarious, it is vibrant, it is very, very queer, it has a spectacular cast of characters and all kinds of representation. I should not have to say anything else. And the second book I picked up on my visit was Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This is an uproarious own voices romance about Rachel Chu, whose boyfriend Nick invites her to his sister's wedding in Singapore, which leads her to believe that she's in for a totally normal meet the parents type experience. However, when she gets there, she realizes it will be far from normal when it's revealed that Nick and his family are rich beyond belief. The movie adaptation was fantastic and I cannot wait to get to this. Also let me know in the comments if you recommend the audiobook. Then we have my August book of the month pick and that was The Air You Breathe by Francis de Pontes Bibles. This is a piece of own voices queer Latinx historical fiction about Torres and Grasa who are brought together on a sugar plantation as children and who eventually grow up to become friends and musical partners. Grasa has an incredible voice and Torres has a talent for composing the music itself and as they navigate the evolving music industry together it changes the very nature of their relationship. If you would like to hear all my in-depth thoughts on this one as well as why I recommend it, I will redirect you to my 5 reasons to read video which will be linked down below, so please do check that out. Then I have another book I recently reread and discussed on this channel and that is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Obviously this was adapted on Netflix and after watching and loving that adaptation I knew I had to go back and give this series a second chance. If you keep up with my videos, then you know that in August I binge read the entire series and it was such a great experience. I will link my spoiler-free discussion video and my August wrap-up down below because they contain a full synopsis and all my thoughts. Then as you may know, I am currently in the midst of a project where I exclusively read Own Voices Latinx books for the entirety of September and October, so I bought a handful of Latinx books to give myself even more choices. The first is an Own Voices Cuban romance called Next Year in Havana by Chanel Cleeton. This blends contemporary romance and historical fiction when the main character, Marisol, travels back to Cuba to scatter her grandmother's ashes in the country of her birth. There she learns more about her family's history, how her grandmother had to flee Cuba at the height of the revolution, and she also finds herself attracted to a man with his own secrets. Then I bought a classic Latinx book, The House of Spirits by Isabel Allende, translated by Magda Boguin from the original Spanish text. Confession, I have never read anything by Isabel Allende, and the fact that on Jane the Virgin she is Jane's favorite author might be a huge part of why I chose this book. This is historical fiction and magical realism that follows the Trueba family over three generations. From what I understand, it twines together the political and the personal as the patriarch of the family is deeply involved in politics and eventually the forbidden conception of his granddaughter could lead to ushering their family and their country into revolution. Then there's the book I'm currently reading, which is Marcus Vega Doesn't Speak Spanish by Pablo Cartaya. Those of you with a careful ear will recognize Pablo Cartaya as the author who wrote one of my favorite middle grade books I read for Hispanic Heritage Month last year, The Epic Fail of Arturo Zamora, and this is his newest book. The main character of this story, Marcus, is 6 feet tall, 180 pounds, and overall he just looks very mature for his age, which means at school he's considered both a target and a threat. But even though he looks intimidating, he's actually pretty nice. He likes volunteering, he cares deeply about helping his family, and especially helping his mom after his dad left. But after Marcus is suspended for allegedly starting a fight, his mom decides they should regroup in Puerto Rico for a week where Marcus learns a great deal about himself. Then I got the graphic novel adaptation of The Adventure Zone, Here There Be Gerblins by the McElroys and illustrated by Carrie Peach. 
I talked about this in my last wrap up. I am such a huge fan of the Adventure Zone podcast, which is a show where the McElroys and their father play Dungeons and Dragons in real time, and I cannot overemphasize its greatness. This particular campaign is about Magnus, a human warrior, Merle, a dwarf cleric, and my personal hero, Taco, a delightfully clever elf wizard who are trying to reclaim these powerful magical objects before they fall into the wrong hands and obliterate all of existence. I urge you to listen to the podcast, read the graphic novel, or both in whatever order you would like. You don't have to understand, like, or even have an interest in Dungeons and Dragons. You don't have to have listened to the podcast to enjoy the comic, but it is brilliant and this show is a gift. Then after falling in love with the audiobook read by Cristian Barillas, I knew I had to buy one of my new all-time favorite books, Joseph Gassara's The House of Impossible Beauties. Like I said in my wrap up, I have not been able to shut up about this book on my channel or on social media. I made a full five reasons to read video, which I can only hope encapsulates this book's beauty, relevance, and brilliance. This is Own Voices Queer Latinx Historical Fiction, all about the queer brown underground ball scene in 1980s New York and it uses fiction to explore the creation of the House of Extravaganza, which was conceptualized as the first all Latinx house. Again, if you want to know more about houses and balls and queens and all my in-depth thoughts on this incredible story, my video will be linked down below, so definitely check that out. Then I got my pre-order of Check, Please! by Ngozi Ukazu, which was finally traditionally published after being a mega popular webcomic. As someone who read the webcomic before, I have been closely following this release since its announcement, and I cannot believe I now own it. This is another delightful queer sports comic about a college student named Biddy who is a former ice skating champion, a well-known vlogger, an amateur baker, and now a freshman on his school's hockey team, which is a whole new challenge. And he also just might be attracted to his rough and moody captain named Jack. Honestly, I wanted to fly through this as soon as it came, and it is slowly killing me that I can't read it just yet. And the last thing that came through right before October hit was my pre-order of the stunning UK edition of Lainey Taylor's Muse of Nightmares. Because this is the conclusion of a duology, I can't exactly talk about the synopsis, but it is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer, which is a phenomenal, ethereal experience of a book. It's basically about this incredible, fantastical world that has been collectively forgotten called Weep. And there's a librarian named Laszlo Strange who is obsessed with this lost mythic city, and finally his chance comes when a traveling embassy of warriors shows up to recruit a team of specialists to travel to Weep. From there, he uncovers this world's history and its secrets, and it's fantastic. This is one of those books where I'm equal parts excited and terrified to read it because I have no way of anticipating all the ways Lainey Taylor is going to hurt me, but I am very, very happy to have this. So those are all the books I've collected over the past three months. Again, I've read roughly half of them, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. As always, if you've read any of these yourself or if you have any ideas for which ones I should prioritize first, I would love to know your thoughts. But that's everything I had for this book haul today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the flip side of the page.